Hey there guys and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy 13. On the last episode we ventured further through the fifth arc. Also I showed you guys an excellent spot to get CP points gathered. So if you're interested in that go ahead and look back on the last episode. It's towards the end of the episode. Also I explained why our battle team is the way that it is and why our roles are the way that they are. And finally, I explained about our Crystarium and which you should develop now that we have access to all roles. And also, I explained of the accessories and weapons that you should use for each character. So this is all optional, but if you want my suggestions, then go ahead and check back on that last episode. And moving on, go ahead and continue through the door ahead. Now as soon as you enter this area, if you press the X button or square to pull up the map, you'll see that there are numerous different paths you can take. So it's really optional if you want to fight the enemies in this area. But you can avoid all the enemies in this area by taking the side pass. Nothing I can't handle. But then you would be losing out on a lot of CP. Thank you. So let's go ahead and punch through the main way so we can fight all the enemies and get as much CP as possible. Watch out for the enemies in this area. Keep a cool head because they can inflict days on your character. So if they do end up dazing one of your characters, it could be really fatal. And again, if you want, you can completely skip all the battles in this area by taking the side detours along the walls. But then you would be missing out on the CP. So we're going to just go ahead and punch straight through the main path. By the way, there are no treasures along the side walls, so don't worry about taking the side walls for treasure. Go ahead and jump down the ledge in the center of the area. And at the lower level, we'll have to take care of some more enemies. Let's get this over with. After taking them out, go ahead and continue on. And the next set of enemies will be guarding a treasure ball. So let's wipe them out so we can open up this treasure ball. Keep a cool head.
So after clearing out the enemies, go ahead and open up the nearby treasure ball for 600 gil. And then jump down the ledge to the right to a lower area. Here we'll have to take out one more group of enemies in this area. Nothing I can't handle. After taking out them, that takes care of all the enemies in this area. Ahead you will see a path to the left, but that just notes to the side path along the walls that I told you about earlier. So if you decided to skip out on all the battles, you will be coming out here. And at least make sure that you backtrack to kill that group of enemies on the middle platform so that you can get that treasure ball for 600 gil. Once you've slaughtered everyone, continue through the large door. And ahead you'll be at a four-way cross. And there'll be a save point to the left. So go ahead and continue straight ahead to enter another large door. sanctum up to? Are they planning to start a war? Alright, so at the next area, which is the Hibernatorium of the Fifth Ark, you'll see these huge red statues. And they're actually weapons. So if you get too close to them, they'll actually come alive and you can fight them. Now there's a missable enemy alert that I should tell you guys about. When fighting these huge statues known as the Berserker, they will tend to summon a special blade called a Centaurian Blade to fight beside them. Now, if you fight one of these big guys, make sure that you wait for it to summon a Centaurian Blade and then Libra, the Centaurian Blade. Because if you're going for all enemy intel, then the Centaurian Blade is missable. Once you leave the fifth arc, you will not be able to fight these specific statues again and they're really not statues they're actually weapons so again there is a missable enemy alert in this area when you fight the berserker which is the large red statues in front of you make sure that you libra the centurion blade that it will summon because it is missable and if you're going for all enemy intel you need to at least libra it once so as you can see, when you get close, On your the, toes. the statues will come alive. Go ahead and start taking it out. Now when it uses its forged blade attack, that's when it forges its centurion blade. Now because we staggered the enemy, his centurion blade is not going to come out at this moment. So if you uh, scan the Berserker, you'll see that he has 142,000 HP. So 
so just go ahead and hack away at it. And once you have finished staggering it, it will use its forge blade attack. And that whenever it's finished, it will it will create the Centaurian blade, which is the large blade to the left or to the right. So make sure that you Libra this blade if you're going for all enemy intel because this is missable. So again, whenever fighting the Berserker, he will use the Forge Blade attack. Once he has forged the blade, the Centaurian blade will fight beside him. You need to Libra it for all enemy intel because it is missable. You do have several chances to get this because you fight several Berserkers in the 5th arc. But once you leave the 5th arc, you will no longer be able to Libra this enemy. So make sure you get it because it is missable. Alright, so after you take care of Libra the Centaurian Blade, Go ahead and finish off the first Berserker. After you take out the first one, there's going to be one more that you need to take out in this area. So let's go ahead and vanquish him as quick as possible. Alright, so after taking out the second Satorian in this area, go ahead and proceed along the destination marker, but look off to the right and you'll find a treasure ball that you can open up. This contains a pair of regals, which is a new weapon for Saz. <clears throat> so as you can see that these weapons increase Saz's magic and barely decrease his strength, making it look better. But if you look at the passive ability, it has Stagger Lock, meaning that Saz cannot stagger the enemy. Somebody else has to stagger the enemy. So while these pair of guns, the Regals, are really good for fighting just normal enemies, if you're trying to stagger the enemy, it's not so good. Because what Stagger Lock means is that Saz will not be able to stagger the enemy. Even if the Stagger Gauge is full and Saz hits to try to stagger it it won't go up he can still increase the stagger bar but once it's full any of his attacks will not initiate a stagger so someone else will have to stagger while it will still build the stagger gauge it will not stagger the enemy once it's full someone else will have to so while this is a great weapon for normal enemies whenever it comes to fighting the tougher enemies that require stagger it's not so good 
So compared to the Procyons, which is stagger maintenance, Procyons blow the Regals out of the water because stagger maintenance means that once Saz does stagger the enemy, he remains in sta a staggered state for a longer duration of time, meaning that you can get more attacks off, making the Procyons a whole lot better than the Regals. So that's just a quick tip for you guys, in case you didn't know what stagger lock meant. Once you get that, continue to the next area. Inside the doorway, you'll find an elevator. Go ahead and examine the switch to be taken lower into the arc. Well, at least we shouldn't run into Psycom here. Alright, so once the elevator stops, go ahead and enter the next area. To the left, you'll find a save point. Once inside the area, jump down and turn right. Here you can take out a group of enemies. Alright, so now we have another missable enemy alert. They just love giving us missable enemy alerts in this area. Be ready for the next fight. Alright, so I couldn't explain it in time, so I'll take the time to do that now. The enemies we just fought, which are the imps, can summon a stronger imp called the Araman. So the Araman is a missable enemy. So if you're trying to get all enemy intel while fighting any imps, make sure that you wait for them to use the Conjure move. Once they use Conjure, they will summon a Araman, which is a stronger version of the imp to fight beside them. Whenever they conjure and summon an Araman, make sure that you Libra the Araman for all enemy intel because it is missable. Once you leave the fifth arc, you will not be able to Libra the Araman. So whenever you are fighting an imp, make sure that you wait for it to use conjure. When it uses the move conjure, it will summon an Araman, which is a new monster to fight beside them. Whenever it summons it, make sure that you liber it for all enemy intel because it is missable. So again, I'll show you guys whenever the time is right. But for now, after you take them out, go ahead and open up the treasure ball for an auric amulet, which is critical shell. Once you get that, go ahead and head to the right side of the area and make your way left towards the destination marker. Let's get this over with. Along the way, you'll run into three imps and two phosphoric oozes. So now is a great time to get the enemy intel that we missed earlier. So take out the phosphoric oozes first. Thanks. Thank you. Alright, so it did not use its special move, Conjure, to summon the Armin so that we can liber it. So we're going to have to wait for the next imp battle, which is coming up. So if you didn't get the imps to summon the Armin to liber it for all enemy intel, don't worry. Because there's going to be another battle coming up. So go ahead and proceed down the only open tunnel. Here you'll find another group of enemies.
All right, after clearing them out, continue down the tunnel, and you'll see two phosphoric oozes and four imps. So here's your third chance to get the imps to use their conjure move and summon Armin so that Nothing you can library. So take out the phosphoric oozes first. wait for the imp to use its conjure move but it doesn't want to do it for some reason so we'll have a couple more chances and then we won't be able to get it anymore so hopefully it comes up 